Good day, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Saturday, October 9th, 2010. I am Darko. Welcome to Global Government News. In this economic news segment, I'd like to start off by uh, plugging my website uh, for new listeners. Uh, please visit www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. And I post the, the most recent videos up there uh, after... I upload them to YouTube, so please check those out. And uh, let's move into this uh, first article from the Washington Times. It was from, I believe, a day or two ago. Uh, it says the Dow closes above 11,000 for the first time since May. And I'm not going to read too much of this because it's going to uh, try to, well, it's basically written to sucker in the suckers. Uh, it says the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed above 11,000 for the first time in five months Friday as hopes built uh, that the Federal Reserve will take more action to get the economy going again. The milestone, which effectively erases the effects of a long summer slump for stocks, comes one day before the three-year anniversary of the market's all-time high. The Dow is still 22% below that level. The last time the Dow closed above 11,000 was May 3rd, just three days prior to a harrowing flash crash that briefly sent stocks plummeting. The Dow had just reached its highest level of the year just one week before. So, moving on, uh, the next one that we have up is Super Rich by Gold by the Ton. The world's wealthiest people have responded to economic worries by buying gold by the bar by the ton. And this is from October 5th, 2010. The world's wealthiest people have responded to economic worries by buying gold by the bar and sometimes by the ton and by moving assets out of the financial system. Bankers catering to the very rich, told Reuters. It says fears of a double-dip downturn have boosted the appetite for physical bullion as well as uh, for mining company shares and exchange-traded funds, UBS executive Joseph Staller told Reuters Global Private Banking Summit, quote, they don't only buy ETFs or futures, they buy physical gold, said Staller, who runs the Swiss bank services for clients with assets of at least $50 million to invest. So, moving on to the next article and uh, for the economy, it says uh, jobs take a hit in September. And um, this is, says the job market suffered another blow last month as businesses hired uh, business hiring sorry dwindled and the government continued to shed workers. Said overall the economy lost a total of 95,000 jobs in September. The Labor Department reported Friday far worse than expected and down from the previous month when employers shed 57 thousand jobs. It says government job losses, especially temporary census positions, have dragged down the overall number for several months. But in September, sweeping cuts by cash strapped state and local governments accounted for more than half of the public sector losses. And it says it goes on says the government shed a total of 159,000 uh, workers in September, uh, a half of them census. Um, of course, there was just a, a recent bill that was just signed by uh, our fewer uh, to, you know, an infrastructure bill that's going to build roads and bridges and that kind of happy stuff again. Uh, and you'll have temporary contracts go to uh, uh, the private sector uh, with public funds, most likely. And, uh, you know, that's going to be temporary. So, says the Washington Post says, Bank of America stops U.S. foreclosures for review. Uh, many of you may have already been aware of this. But it says uh, that the Bank of America on Friday halted foreclosures on homes across the country so it could review paperwork in tens, in tens of thousands of cases for flaws, expanding a crisis at a perilous time for housing mar for the housing market. So the move came at as PNC Financial Services became the fourth major bank to announce that it would stop foreclosures in at least some states. It added... Uh, to growing concerns that mortgage lenders have been evicting homeowners despite flawed court papers. Bank of America, the largest U.S. bank, has said uh, a week earlier it would stop foreclosures in the 23 states where the process must be approved by a judge. Ally Financial's GMAC Mortgage Unit and J.P. Morgan Chase had announced similar plans. It said Bank of America's uh, nationwide halt will apply to homes that the bank is taking back itself and those for which it has transferred the papers to the mortgage buyers Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Um, uh, the next one is from the Washington Post as well. It says, a read uh, calls on lenders to halt foreclosures in all 50 states. Senator uh, 
or Senate Majority uh, Leader Henry Reid called on major leaders or major lenders, sorry, to halt foreclosures across the country Friday following Bank of America's announcement. It was stopping proceedings until it finishes reviewing possible paperwork problems. Reid, who had sent a letter to the major banks asking them to suspend foreclosures in Nevada, extended his concern to include all 50 states. Quote, I thank Bank of America for doing all the right things by suspending actions on foreclosures while this investigation runs its course, said Reed. Quote, I urge other major mortgage servicers to consider expanding the area uh, where they have halted foreclosures to all 50 states as well. And, uh, you know, he's kind of uh, basically, uh, this, is, this is supposed to appeal to his uh, constituents. My, and it says down here, it says, uh, my primary focus is to protect Nevada homeowners who have been the hardest hit by foreclosures in the most recent economic downturn. So it's all politics. It says here uh, from CBS Chicago, suburbs take hit as U.S. poverty climbs in downturn. And a little picture of a nice little uh, Middletown America. It says, battered by the downturn, America's suburbs are bearing the brunt of poverty among those of working age that have climbed to its highest level in almost a half a century, creating strains on dwindling safety net programs focusing mostly on the inner city poor. Some of the numbers from uh, the Chicago area are shocking. So, it says uh, the U.S. poverty rate is projected to edge towards 15 percent. Several suburban counties outside of Chicago experienced more than 40 percent increases of poor residents from 2000 to 2008. According to the Brookings Institute report, strained suburbs, the social service challenges of rising suburban poverty. It says the numbers get even more shocking. The report finds the number of poor in Romeoville went up more than 500 percent during that period, and in Plainfield it was 200 it was 200%, and McHenry, 170%, and St. Charles, 112 So the number of poor in the city of Chicago dropped 0.9%, according to the report. In Evanston, the number of poor dropped more than 17%. Um, and here's all the Brookings report data. Uh, this is all 2000, and this is uh, 2006 to, through 2008. And um, you can see the uh, overall increase in, uh, in these numbers, uh, I think there's a one that uh, actually goes down, but for the most part, they're all going up. And um, here we are. We're going to move on to the next one. It says, uh, more bad news, 10 things you should know about the latest economic numbers. This is from the Economic Collapse blog.com. It's a good website. I recommend checking out this along with all the other links that uh, I'll post up here. Uh, but it goes in there and says, uh, the truth is that more bad news for the U.S. economy comes out almost daily now. I know that because I've been documenting it. The following are the 10 things that you need to know about the latest economic numbers. Number one, Gallup's uh, measure of unemployment, which is not adjusted for seasonal factors, showed a sharp increase in September. According to Gallup, uh, unemployment has increased from 8.9% in July to 9.3% in August and to 10.1% in September goes on and says, number two, the seasonally adjusted alternate unemployment rate compiled by shadow government statistics shows that the real unemployment rate in the United States is far worse than it has ever been since the economic downturn began. And here's the, the numbers down here. You can check those out. It says the alternate unemployment rate calculated by SGS reflects estimated, quote, long-term discouraged workers, which the U.S. government stopped keeping track of back in 1994. And so... And they're going on here saying it's anywhere between 15 to 23.5%. The number of Americans working part-time jobs, quote, for economic reasons, is now uh, the highest it has been in the last five years. You, know, you have, like, engineers in that working at fast food restaurants and Home Depot. It says number four, 15.8% of Americans between the ages of 18 and 29 were unemployed during the month of September. It says uh, agricultural commodities continue to move higher on Friday. That's right. The food prices are going higher, guys. It says uh, wheat, corn, and soybeans all saw their prices soar. Unfortunately for American consumers, this is part of a broader trend of rising agricultural commodity prices. As this continues, it is inevitable that we will all be seeing much higher food prices at our local grocery stores, and we're already seeing that in Walmart, uh, not with just food, with not just food, but also uh, just regular items and goods that we get from China through, yeah, through usually Walmart, they're the biggest distributor of it. 
Um, but it says, uh, it is being reported that PNC Financial Services Group has suspended the sale of foreclosed homes for the next 30 days. This is the fourth major lender to take dramatic action recently. We will, uh, will nearly all U.S. mortgage lenders eventually be caught up in the crisis before it's over. It goes on, it says Bank of America announced on Friday is now going to suspend sales of foreclosed homes at all 50 states as it continues to evaluate internal foreclosure procedures. Moving on, the U.S. national debt just keeps growing. If you took national debt and divided it up by all Americans, each American, including children, would owe approximately $42,000 each. So for an average family of four, their share of a national debt would be about $168,000 average. Wow. <laughs> Interest payments on the U.S. national debt increased 13% in the fiscal year that ended September 30th. If interest payments continue to increase that rapidly each year, they will bankrupt the United States government very quickly. Eh, maybe they can institute another Social Security uh, tax, right? Because that was to go to the bankers to pay off the first bankruptcy in 1933, I believe. And number 10 says it appears that some weird games are being played with the national debt numbers. And uh, you can go in there and check this out. I'm going to got more news i got to roll into. 23 mil million Americans hit by a tax hike, but they may not know it yet. This is from October 5th, cnsnews.com. Almost 23 million Americans' households have already had their federal taxes raised by an average of $3,900 this year, but they may not know it yet. Uh, they could get a big surprise when they prepare their tax returns next year. Among those uh, subject to the increase are uh, subject to this already in place tax increase are some families making less than 50 grand a year and virtually all married couples earning between 100 and 500,000 a year, according to data published by the Congressional Budget Office. This insidious tax hike is contrary to Obama's repeated promise not to increase taxes on an individual earning less than 200,000 a year or on any household earning less than 250000 a year, says the tax increase on almost 23 million people will happen if Congress does not quickly pass legislation that temporarily increases the amount of income exempt from the alternative minimum tax. So you can go out there and check out the specifics uh, with the link that's posted. New Yorkers' income falls for the first time in 70 years. The recession put a 3.1% dent in the personal incomes of New York State residents who endured their first full year decline in more than 70 years according to report released Tuesday paychecks or net earnings tumbled 5.4 percent while dividends interest and rent slid 8.4 percent to a grand total of nearly 900 billion dollars the state comptroller's report said not only did New Yorkers personal incomes fall almost twice as much as they did in the nation as a whole but they have yet to recover to pre-recession levels the comptroller uh, Tom Thomas Napoli said the drop occurred even though the job-destroying recession was milder in New York than the rest of the country. One reason is uh, the Wall Street's dominance among the state employers pay and job security are often highly volatile in the securities industry. Moving on to Press TV article, in September, 58,000 teachers lost their jobs. U.S. government has laid off nearly 58,000 teachers and education workers in September despite a uh, $26 billion U.S. Uh, federal aid package passed by Congress. Moving on, it says France Senate raises retirement age. This is happening, or it's going to happen in the U.S. and uh, in the U.K. if it hasn't happened already. The French Senate has approved increasing the retirement age from 60 to 62, despite the public outcry against the country's pension plan modifications. That's right, their agenda will just keep moving forward where you'll work until you're basically dead, unless, uh, you know, of course, you're making a lot of money to save up. IMF cuts U.S. economic growth estimates. The U.S. economy will have a sluggish growth this year and in 2011 due to weak consumer spending rate and soaring debt, says the IMF. Moving on, it says uh, report China's GDP growth to slow in third quarter. Moving on, the next one is Geithner urges greater IMF role in currencies. So we have our own uh, sovereign nation being represented by uh, Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner urging the IMF uh, to play a bigger role in monitoring how countries manage their currencies. So this guy is a sellout. And here's a picture of the sellouts right here. World economies vow to act to bolster IMF's role. Uh, and there he is. Wall Street Journal, IMF wants a network of regional funds to avoid a future crisis that was created by the bankers. So the bankers are going to manage this. I mean, this is crazy. IMF report calls for updating surveillance. Soros warns China of global currency and finance leaders fail to resolve currency dispute.
Thank you, everyone. Take care.